Hello everyone and welcome to my class. Um, so we just discussed or you have read about power and luminosity and how power and luminosity are essentially units of, of power each uh, with the units of watts. And now we can take that knowledge from power and luminosity, stellar luminosity, and use that to begin calculating planetary temperatures. And in fact, I'm going to show you an example right now how to calculate the effective planetary temperature of the Earth which orbits the sun. So if we look at this diagram here on the board, um, here is the sun, uh, globe there with the sun, with a radius r, luminosity L sub s, and then with a distance d to the earth, which has a radius of r sub p, um, an area, two-dimensional area of pi r p squared, then the surface area is for pi r p squared, and albedo of A. And the same thing for the sun, I should also say that the surface area for the sun is also for pi r squared. I'm using r for the sun for the radius and rp, our planet, for the radius of the earth. Now, I want to uh, now to, to get this energy balance, what you're trying to actually find is the absorbed sunlight, which what basically you have is the absorbed sunlight must equal the thermal energy radiated back by the planet to space. That's the equation we want to solve. The left-hand side is the absorbed sunlight, and the right-hand side is the emitted energy to space. Now, the way we do this is uh, we, we want to get this, of course, in terms of, of of power. And so essentially I'm going to define a new quantity to start off with called the brightness or the brightness of uh, sunlight essentially, which is uh, L sub s over 4 pi d squared. So this 4 pi d squared is essentially the surface area of the sphere. So if we, you know, took the light and if we imagined Earth's orbit around the sun and we turn that into a sphere, you know, so it's basically a sphere of radius d, that's what that 4 pi d squared is. It's the surface area of that entire globe of light that encompasses Earth's orbit, you know, a, a, a sphere about Earth's orbit around the sun. So assuming, you know, uh, a, a sphere around, around, you know, Earth's orbit, that's 4 pi d squared. Essentially, at every point around here, around D, that as long as it's a distance D from the sun, it's going to get the same amount of energy arriving at that point D, regardless of where you're on that, the surface of that sphere. Now, uh, we want this in watts. So this is, you know, watts per meter squared. So in actuality, uh, then the absorbed energy, you know, we try, like we said, we know absorbed energy must equal absorbed is equal to emitted and we're doing the left hand side the absorbed energy then has to be in in watts this has to go back to so you need an area term here the absorbed energy you know d distance from the sun at earth's distance what's being absorbed is a, a circle of radius of, 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 of area pi r squared or pi r p squared so that's times pi r p squared, and, but then you have clouds. We have So I'm going to introduce a new term called the albedo here, which is the, a measure of how reflective a planet is. And on, in Earth's case, it's about 30%, but we're going to just leave it as A. So we're going to have this, this is the amount of power received at Earth's orbit or Earth's location from the sun. To, uh, minus some fraction. So, you know, in Earth's case, if A is 0.3 or 30%, this is 1 minus 0.3 or 0.7. But we'll just leave the variables there. Uh, so that's just a fraction of this, this term on the left. That has to equal to the amount emitted. So then what we can do is do, just like, you know, you have a, a solar or stellar luminosity, and that's 4 pi r squared sigma t to the fourth. If you remember from what we just read, you get a similar thing for the Earth. The Earth will also emit across the entire surface of the sphere. So that's going to be 4 pi rp squared times sigma t to the fourth. And now 
we can begin canceling out terms. The pi rp squares cancel. <clears throat> and when you group all these terms, um, what you actually get uh, is L sub s times 1 minus a over uh, 16 pi sigma d to the squared is equal to t to the fourth. And uh, let's just take this out here. Then you just take the, the uh, fourth root of both sides, and what you actually get is something that looks like this, t to the one-fourth power, or, you know, t to the one-fourth one power on both sides is just t is equal to L sub s 1 minus a over 16 pi sigma d to the square to the 1 fourth power. And now I'm going to introduce a new term <laughs> in all of this uh, madness. Uh, so what we want to say here is uh, the, the atmospheric scientists don't like all of this stuff. This is kind of still complicated. We can actually define a new term called the flux. So the flux, uh, which is power per unit area, essentially, is going to be equal to the, you know, L sub s, in this case, luminosity over uh, uh, 4 uh, pi d squared. So if you plug that in there for s, what you actually get is something that looks like this, t is equal to s1 minus a over 4 sigma to the 1 fourth power. And this is the actual equation, t equals s times 1 minus a over 4 sigma to the 1 fourth power. This is what is also called as the effective temperature. So this is what you're going to be uh, using. Uh, and when you plug these values in for the Earth, actually, which is very interesting, and I will do that in a second, if we, uh, you know, were to plug in typical values for the Earth, for, for so here's the equation. I'm going to write this again more clearly. T effective equals s times 1 minus a over 4 sigma to the 1 fourth power. If we were to plug in values for the Earth, it turns out, as I said earlier, the albedo is 0.3. Sigma, we know from our notes, is that 5.67e, the negative eighth number. Uh, s is actually about 1360 watts per meter squared. Per meter squared. Uh, and we know sigma, as we said, is 5.67 E to, e, e to the negative eighth. Uh, <clears throat> and if we plug all these numbers in, what we actually get um, in units of, 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 of sigma, what we actually, so it's like watts per uh, meter squared per k to the fourth. When we plug all of this stuff in here, you actually get a value for Earth of about 255 k. And this is the effective temperature for the Earth. But there's a problem with this value. Uh, we know, you know, if we actually get the uh, actual observed temperature, or the mean temperature for the Earth is about 288K, or about 33K degrees warmer. So what's the issue here? And we'll talk about this in a later lecture. But this is just the effective emitting temperature of the Earth, which uh, this assumes a black body, that you have a a planet that's a you know a kind of a perfect absorber, perfect emitter, but real planets uh, over all wavelengths, but real planets are not that way. Um, um, they absorb differently, emit differently at different wavelengths, and so what actually happens is that, um, and then you have something called the greenhouse effect essentially on the Earth, which goes beyond these considerations of black body emission or absorption, and so the real temperature for the Earth is 288 K of which 288k minus 255k 
equals 33, 30, and 33K. This is the, the greenhouse effect. And we will talk about this in greater detail in a later lecture. I'll leave that there a few more seconds if there's uh, still something unclear, but uh, have fun.